Welcome everyone to Soul Evolution. This is the first class and this is really an introduction to the work of Soul Evolution and the journey of Pluto into Aquarius. My intention today is to bring forward just a space of transmission. I'm going to talk in depth about the Pluto journey and also give some guidelines and background around this class series, which begins um, this month. So I'm so glad that you're here. If you're watching this recording afterwards, um, all of the information and all of the links to register, everything will be posted on the website, astrologywithmichelle.com and also on the goddessastrologycollective.com. So you can find more details there, but I'm just grateful to be here with you and to be doing this work. This really is kind of the calling of my heart right now. Um, soul evolution for me is like what we're here for. That is the, it's the purpose of um, the journey of life itself. Soul evolution is about um, this process that we're in of remembering who we are. And a lot of what I've been working with in the last several years as an astrologer, but mostly in terms of in my personal life, has been um, a, a pretty intense Pluto transit. It began as Pluto on my south node, then Pluto on my Venus, then Pluto square my Pluto. So I feel I'm qualified to guide this instruction, even simply by um, the intensity of the transits that I've worked with over the last several years. And it's not done. I'm in the middle of my Pluto square Pluto. So in meditation one day, I had the thought, okay, I'm really called to the Pluto work. What is it that I'm called to do? And it's really to face, to come face to face with that which is on the inside, to not miss this evolutionary opportunity in my life and not miss the calling of my soul to evolve. I came into this lifetime for whatever reason um, with a very core calling to do some really deep and intense work. It's been that way since I was a child, my adolescence, my upbringing, and even in my adult life today, it continues to be um, where I am faced with the choice to evolve and to grow. Um, and it's, I face my own resistance every single day, but I've come to a place in my life where it feels as though there really is no choice but to fully embrace. And a few weeks ago, I, I got this download that, you know, in the Pluto journey, it's like a triangle. I should make an image for this. The base of the triangle is um, the axis of resistance and acceptance. You know, resistance to our evolutionary um, imperative, I guess, resistance to what's happening in our life. We could simplify it as like, I'm resisting what is happening in my life equals suffering. We all can find that and know that in our life, wherever we feel this strong sense of I'm suffering, this is, this life is shit. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, that that deep despair that comes from the experience of life itself. And also I would call it the opposite of that despair, the rage, right? The, the feeling of just being fed up with life. In some ways, these are just the same face of resistance our resistance to the evolutionary calling. Now we can fall back from that, especially when we're in a place of despair into a place of acceptance. And we can just simply accept. And I would, I would call this like surrender. Most people associate the quality of surrender with Neptune. It's a, 
it's really an opening of a place where we start to believe and maybe feel on some level that the divine work is at hand that there's nothing that we can do to change so rather than resisting what's happening we actually face this um coming to terms letting go releasing accepting what's happening and while those states are you know like the the opposite of one another they're on the baseline of that triangle they are not what we are essentially called to. And that's where I feel the deeper Pluto work is. It's in the aspect of cooperation. That would be the top of the triangle. And cooperation is a different state. We're not simply allowing ourselves to be um, taken, which can mean including being taken by intense emotions we are choosing to actively cooperate with evolution it almost feels like the exact opposite of both acceptance and resistance it's somehow doing something with our will with our life force that allows for a new way it allows for something to emerge that has yet to be a part of our evolutionary experience and through that we end up having breakthroughs we end up having a complete experience of being united with divine will with our um our sense of empowerment our sense of purpose our sense of cooperation with the divine is being imbued with the flow of life force energy it's not being taken by the shadow nor resisting the shadow. It's not um, letting go into the despair. It's choosing absolutely, absolutely to be liberated, to become empowered, and to be reborn by the experience. And that is the calling for me as I feel so much of this evolutionary pressure I want to deeply and fully cooperate with the divine will. I want to fully know myself as the love that I am. And I want to be in a field and in a group and in a circle of, of people who are of souls who are choosing to do that themselves, choosing to do that um, out of a knowing inside my soul is ready for this work. My soul is ready to grow. My soul is ready to know. My soul is ready to know the truth about who I am, about the world, about life itself. And we can't really know ourselves if we're caught in cycles of shame and guilt, if we're stuck in ways of repeating the past and power dynamics with others, other souls where we become entangled in these relationships that bring up all of these shadow pieces and yet we're stuck we're trapped right that the journey of pluto is the journey of the underworld and in a lot of the mythology pluto takes either venus or persephone takes the goddess down into the underworld and what happens on earth of course is that her mother the divine mother is angry it's furious furious that this god would possess her child and take her down and at the same time the journey of the feminine the journey of the goddess uh, through the underworld is one of facing tests facing fear facing all of the darkness of being in the dark and when we look at how our life is where we're taken into periods of darkness, to periods of deep, deep work. We can simply relate to it from the perspective of, oh, this is too much. I can't do this. I can't face this. We can give the power over to others by blaming, by shaming ourselves, by um, remaining stuck trapped right it's like if we're walking through the gates of the underworld we can get to the gate 
and see, oh, there is no way I can work through this. No way I can forgive. No way I can let this go. I'm stuck in this relationship. I'm stuck in this place. I'm stuck in this guilt, this fear. It's in me. I would say that like, that is one way of resisting. It's almost, and it can show its face in that form of like deep resistance to what's happening, or it can show its face in the form of acceptance. Like I can't do anything. I give up. I'm just going to be like this for the rest of my life. And the calling of this work and of this time is that we actually ascend to a space of cooperation that we face the underworld journey through an inner world journey, that we come to look inside and what arises in the place of shame, in the place of fear, in in the place where these old dynamics, and I'm going to call these ancient soul dynamics because they may be you know, playing themselves out with your boss or your friend or your family or your partner or, you know, your ex this or ex that. Um, They may be playing themselves out through your health, through your work, but these are ancient soul dynamics. They're the kind of dynamics that when we look back through your family lineage, your mother, your father, your grandmother, your grandfather, your great, great grandparents, the stories that actually got trapped in the cellular framework of your being, of your soul, that don't even have a place in time and space. No one talks about them. No one says, no one speaks about the molestation that happened to your great great grandmother or the child that died in your grandfather's arms that no one even says belonged to your family or the the suicide attempt that your mother experienced it's like these dark shadows of our collective and individual lives these They remain trapped in the collective memory. They remain trapped in our bodies, in our souls. And the calling of evolution, the calling of cooperation is to heal them. To heal them, we have to actually feel them. We have to face them, whether they're places in our own past, in our life. And we can say, that person betrayed me. That person broke my heart. That person hurt me. That family member did something unspeakable to me, to to someone in my family. My child experienced this. That grandfather did this. Like when we can begin to name these, when we begin to say things and feel things, when we begin to turn inside and face, we have to face one, the pathway to forgiveness, which is often a very rocky and challenging road. One where I can't say that like, oh, I just so easily uh, forgave that. I just so easily shed that shame, you know, especially when there's things like sexual abuse, emotional abuse, manipulation, when there's been control and extreme feelings of suppression and rejection. I can't just like work through that and like walk on with my life. It takes really dedicated and conscious effort. It often takes many, many years. And all of a sudden something's triggered. And this is the way I see the transits actually, that when by transit, we're experiencing something that triggers these deepest parts from within What is happening is actually a portal opens for deeper healing. When things are reawoken in our experience, when a a relationship comes into our lives that reminds us of the past, and so we start playing out those past dynamics, then we have this core opportunity. We have the opportunity to face those dynamics and actually to heal to actually to let go 
And to let go into cooperation means accepting the path of forgiveness. It accepts that the real journey is to discovering the place within us that is untouched. That is the soul. That is the core essence of our soul. It is the place within us that is unscarred by any experience that we might have had, any trauma. It is the place within us that knows the essential truth that we are love and that we are one soul. And that that sense brings total peace. It brings a, a level of understanding and acceptance that says that this is, this happened, this is here because I have the capacity to evolve, to meet this, to know myself with greater love and awareness and presence than ever before. And we want to call that in actually at this time more than ever, because remaining in the place of despair, of oppression, of suppression, remaining in the place of being the victim of our circumstances is no longer sustainable. So many people are leaving this planet, leaving um, life itself because we haven't really created the safety in our being to know ourselves as the truth. And so it feels like there's only way but to go back, right? To go back to source. But we want to be able to return to source now. We want to be able to find peace in our lives now. We want to be able to face our inner world and experience what it is to know ourselves as love now. We want to actually transform our relationships so that in the depths of intimacy, we are seen, we are loved, so that the, no, no man or woman, no family member, no trauma can reject us, can suppress the truth that we know inside. And so if we are doing this work and we're facing these places within again and again and again, um, there can be an extreme sense of loneliness and isolation. Like we're walking in the darkness by ourselves. And that's where this class for me is a beginning. It's an opening into what it is to create a collective space of looking, of listening together, you know, I started my class series a few um, years ago, and there are some here who have been with me since the beginning of this work of really like doing these listening circles and holding space for listening to whatever emerges. Imagine if you could share your truth and what's inside of you with zero judgment, zero guilt, zero shame, and zero fear of rejection. That's what it is to have such deep listening, to have such deep holding. And that's essentially like one of the most powerful ways for us to see what's inside. And then I began to look at the chart. And a lot of my work has been in um, seeing past family trauma, seeing the Pluto work. You know, I've studied with evolutionary astrologers, including my partner, Ari Moshe, um, I've studied with, you know, I'm, I'm studying with Tom Jacobs right now. I've studied with Stephen Forrest in the past. I've studied with these core, core founders, you know, reading the Pluto book, doing the Pluto work as Jeffrey Wolf Green teaches. And for me, my Pluto work is different. It's like we can take all of that uh, theoretical soul uh, programming, all of that information, it's great information to have. And the reality of my experience of the birth chart and of the chart of the moment, the present moment, is that it's constantly reflecting to me the reality of our work, the calling, what's here right now. And that's where the way I hold this is to actually look at the chart to actually call forward um, what is present now and do that work, 
face that, look at it, feel it, listen to one another, listen to what's emerging and really hold space for the application of these core teachings, which I think are some of the most profound teachings in the world. I'm supporting Ari right now on a team of five, you know, five evolutionary astrologers and launching this um, association for evolutionary astrology dedicated to the teachings of Jeffrey Wolf Green. And these astrologers are incredible and they're deeply steeped in this work. And I'm supporting them all to do this full nine month class series. And when we have those teachings, we, we are still living our lives. And for me, like this evolution is, what is it that we actually take these teachings and live them, apply them and have a container for actually feeling them, looking at them, facing them together, not in isolation, but in community, not in, um, in our own darkness, but actually together in our light in our being able to see ah this is here in our being able to speak ah this is so this is what this is what emerges for me i feel jealous i feel afraid i feel triggered this is what i'm facing this power dynamic again and again and again in my relationship this is what i'm calling myself forward into a freedom into a liberation and into an empowerment that actually is choosing to cooperate with evolution. I want to cooperate. Pluto is going to be entering Aquarius and pretty soon I'll move into the transits and into the chart. This is a collective evolution, but it's actually, um, you know, it will be the beginning of a long-term process. Uh, all week in, in the past two weeks, every single reading that I did, people had zero degree planets. For me, it was a re core reflection. Um, and when I find these themes in readings where I'm doing a whole series of readings for all different people, all different ages, all different stages, all different walks of life, every single person with the same signature in different ways, expressed in different ways, I see that I'm looking at the soul really ready to see something new. I'm, I'm looking at the soul really ready to evolve in a way that it hasn't before. And Pluto enters Aquarius at zero degrees. So every single person had a planet that was going to receive some aspect, either trine, maybe in conjunct, maybe square, right? In all different ways, we're walking through life experience as individual souls and we feel like, oh, this is me. This is my life. This is the work that I'm doing. These are the, these are the traumas from my past. These are the unspoken things of my life. The things that I do behind closed doors that I feel most afraid to look at, to face. Because what would happen if we actually face these things? Well, I think that actually the illusion would be shattered. We would discover that we are loved. You know, it's like when you have that like deep thing that you just feel like you cannot talk to another person about. And then you have the moment of coming to this honesty and facing and sharing to, to discover that we are still loved. Even if the other person has their own journey, even if they reject us, even if they're angry, even if they're hurt. The truth is that there's some part of our soul, some part of our heart that can never be scarred. That is what I want to know in this lifetime. That is the place I want to get to with every single thing, with every trauma in my life, with every fear, with every piece of me. And I feel like that is the collective evolution where we move into Aquarius, where we actually accept one another our uniqueness and our sameness as a, as a mirror of the, of the divine, where we accept one another on a level of humanity that we have not yet experienced. In one of my ceremonies a few months ago is the ceremony that I did just before uh, my daughter Imuna was conceived. Her name means faith in Hebrew. It's um, 
and it's she's a she's a powerful being of love and peace and presence and um, before she was conceived I received this vision of humanity living in love and in relationship to one another in a way that I had never experienced and what came through that ceremony was a sense of total peace and total trust while simultaneously experiencing everything dark that I could ever experience, every feeling, every emotion, and to be able to maintain in my mind a state of total peace during that entire experience. That is really the goal of, of this life journey, that we can walk in our life in total peace and total trust to everything that's happening knowing ourselves i was anchored to peace inside of my body in a way that i had never experienced before and so i feel this this journey of pluto into aquarius and pluto will move into aquarius in march um but we'll go again back into capricorn several times while squaring the nodal axis next, next year so this first class series is six months of moving towards that we're moving with the building energy of these core transits we're starting this month with class beginning actually next friday september 9th that'll be the first introduction class i'm going to introduce the chart work we're going to be looking at it, the your individual chart if you join the course we're going to be dropping into your chart your pluto your soul work and i'm doing six months of this work so that we can evolve together so that we can grow together and in part it's because there's you know there is a whole unfolding and it may actually lead to a second round of this series um in april pluto will begin the square to the nodal process um so this may end up being a year-long class series but i'm doing it in six month segments so the first six months is the journey into aquarius and then our next six months would be the journey through the nodal square through the change and the nodal square will bring about that which is like unresolved in these particular lifetimes. The other theme that I got in readings over the last two weeks was um, the Libra Aries nodal access. And so for anyone who's having planets in Libra and Aries, anyone who's having a nodal return in those, um, you know, I've been talking a lot about this Scorpio Taurus axis, which has been really powerful and foundational, but it's because that is catalyzing from a fixed access perspective, a journey into the cardinal signs, right? A journey into a whole new initiation. And with the nodes being squared over the next year, we are talking about a, a huge evolutionary in, intention, really powerful relative to our individual will and our relational will. So much is gonna change over the next, um, you know, 18 to 24 months. So this first six months is that journey in. We're going to go down in. We're going to go down under. Pluto stations direct on October 9th. Our October class will be our second class. We'll be meeting on the first, or sorry, second Friday of the month at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You know, with this core group, once we have our first class, there is some flexibility if the time needs to change for the group, if there's... Um, a need for doing a, a second class for um, the chart work. A really big part of this intention is to create uh, a field of healing over the next six months that guides us through, through some really intense transits that are also coming. At the end of the year, Venus joins Pluto in Capricorn for anyone who is having a Venus return, for anyone who has had Pluto in these late degrees of Capricorn. Um, this is a direct Pluto. This is a <laughs> Venus joining. And it's similarly the same Venus transit that Venus made last year. So if you are thinking back in your life to what was happening last year at the end of the year, it's really it's bringing that back but we're evolutionary we're in an evolutionary stage where we're now ready to move that venus work forward mercury um, is doing a retrograde dance 
while Venus is joining with Pluto, that'll be a lot of fun. That's actually kind of, it'll be the same square to the Mercury's retrograde, which is beginning very soon, actually next week on our Friday class is the Mercury station day. Mercury's current retrograde is through Libra. And then if you think about it, where Mercury next retrogrades is in that square to the Libra axis in Capricorn. So we have a really powerful Mercury because if we think of Mercury as the messenger of the gods, when Mercury's joining with Pluto, when Mercury's squaring Pluto, Mercury is bringing back the messages and Mercury retrograde. And I'll, I'll be talking about this in the week ahead videos for the coming weeks here, but um, Mercury brings back the past so that we can face it, so that we can fix it, so that we can heal it. It's really a, it's a unique opportunity because with any retrograde planet, we get three passes. We get three chances to see it, to uh, to live it, to work it out, to fix it, to resolve it, to move it forward before the next evolutionary cycle. So when Mercury joins Pluto, it'll be the square to this current retrograde. Um, I think a lot of the information will be coming back around and integrated in a Capricorn way, in a Saturn way. Um, then we have Mercury entering zero degrees and Pluto at the 29th degree. So that happens the very next day after the Mercury, Pluto. And Mercury, I think, is often, because it's one of the faster moving planets, bringing through a little space of information for us. A little bit like, it's like a whisper. Sometimes if we're listening, we get a little precursor. It's sort of like if you are watching a movie and someone gives up a little bit of a detail about the plot and the ending of the movie, if you were paying attention, you would catch that detail and you'd be like, oh yeah, that's what's going to happen. And you might get excited. You might even feel like, oh my God, I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen at the end of the movie, but you still have to play it out, right? You still have to get to the end to where you get to see how it unfolds. That's really kind of this Mercury, um, whenever Mercury or Venus, these faster moving pl planets, especially I speak about this from the weekly perspective, the moon doing this all the time because she moves the fastest of all these bodies. She can often on an emotional level, give us that same whisper of something if we're really listening. And this is a part of why I've really dedicated myself to following the lunar transits and following the moon, um, because I wanna hear and listen to what's coming, right? And get excited about what might be playing out in our lives, but also remain open to just seeing how does this unfold? What happens, right? And in the story of our soul's evolution, there are two stories that we imagine are simultaneously unfolding. One is the fearful story, and one is the loving story. This is the core message of the Course in Miracles. There are two energetics, fear and love. And, but the Course says, the funny thing is, the reality is only one of them is true, and that is love. But we come to believe the illusion, we come to believe the fear is so true, is so real, it drives us as if when you're in a dream state and so freaked out that you wake up and it, it feels as, that, as though that had happened. But then you wake up and you realize, oh, that was just a dream, but I'm actually having like heart pal palpitations. I'm having physical sensations. I'm experiencing this trauma, this thing that happened in my dream. That's, that's the way we're experiencing the journey of the soul. When we wake up and we realize, oh, that was just a dream. And the truth is that I'm here. I am well. I am loved and none of that happened. That, that's the awakening. That's the place of, you know, in the Course in Miracles, it's, it's essentially the place before forgiveness. And I always think of the word forgiveness, forgiveness, to give as if before. So it's to return the mind to a place as if it was before anything ever happened to return, return our memory, 
ourselves, our soul, our orientation to love as if always before, as if it was always there. Love was always with us. We forgot, we went to sleep, whatever you want to say. We, we got so engrossed in the dream, in the nightmare that we were believing it to be real. And in the end, Pluto enters Aquarius, March 23rd. This is actually the first entry. And Pluto will retrograde and go back and forth all throughout 2023 and into 2024 before it finally makes a full entry into Aquarius and doesn't return again for another 280 plus years. So, you know, this is why this is soul work. These are lifetime transits. These are transits that in this physical body, in this collective environment, in this life experience, we will never experience again. And um, these are powerful transits. So the class itself is um, second Friday of the month, 10 a.m. Pacific time for six months. We're going to focus um, right from the beginning on shame, then guilt, then fear, then power dynamics in December. That'll be fun with Venus entering to, to the mix. Then liberation, of course, because why would we even face all of this stuff if there wasn't some way out? Empowerment, which I think of as the place of returning completely to our whole self. And then rebirth, right? When rebirth is the place of um, reawakening and remembering where we actually come back to that full presence of knowing ourselves, of knowing um, who and what we are here to do. And it, we're doing all of this, obviously not that all this, you know, shadow work will be done by the end of this six months, but actually just as a beginning of really um, grounding ourselves in our life, in, um, in this journey, in community, with, um, with really a safe space to see and be seen to look and to feel and, uh, you know, not that everything will get done in, you know, in a day, but that we will be connected to a thread of souls, to a group of souls who are doing this work. And for this reason, I'm limiting the number of people who can join the class. Um, one, because I wanna be able to address everyone's chart individually. And two, because I find that small containers um, for this work is um, really good. You know, I, I, intimacy um, breeds connection. And um, we, we want to create a space where that connection can be, even if we're not, you know, in the same place. I would love to be doing this work, you know, with, with everyone connected in the same place. And maybe this soul evolution work will lead to a retreat or some sort of, um, you know, live space where we actually do ceremony and, and, um, and deeper work together over time, who knows what, what this will bring forward. But for me, this is the beginning. This is the beginning of that journey and a way for us to deeply connect. So if you want to join the class, you can register at uh, astrologywithmichelle.com. It's $200 for the entire series. You can pay the just full class series, or if you need a monthly plan, it's $48 a month for six months, for the six month time period. Um, there is limited spots available to join the group. It's open now for registration and there are scholarship options. If you feel you are so called to this work and you're committed to it, and there are some barrier to doing that, um, please reach out and be in touch with me. You can email, uh, email me at astrologywithmichelle at gmail.com um, or message me through the website. That's another way to do it. So let's look at the chart because um, this is pretty fun. This is how I do this. And in fact, most of what I just did was that transmission. But we're beginning this class series next Friday. So we'll go to Friday the 9th, I believe it is, 10 a.m. 
and Libra rising. Oh, beautiful. Um, Venus in, is in Virgo already, right? So when we talk about Pluto work, we're talking about the purification process. We're talking about, you know, it's similar to if you work with plant medicines, um, in particular ayahuasca, it's a purgative medicine. A lot of people purge, you know, it, that medicine goes into the body. It works with the digestive system, right? It works with the body system and it moves up and out all of the energies, all of the stuff that's stuck inside. So when we're talking about Pluto, we have a Pluto retrograde right now, 26 degrees Capricorn. This is one of those spots that Pluto has been in again and again and again. And we're getting towards the end of this particular transit. So if you have late degree Capricorn planets, you have been feeling this for some time. If you have late degree Libra planets, you have been feeling this for some time, receiving the square, right? And we're, we're talking about a Libra rising chart, Venus ruling that, Venus and Virgo, the calling for us to really purify what is Virgo? It's a, a Mercury ruled earth sign. It's the embodiment of the mind. It is the opposite of Pisces, right? It, which is a mutable water. So we're in a space right now of changing energy where our minds are prepared to do the work. We have Mercury in the 12th house, Mercury here in Libra and at its shadow degree, ready to go retrograde right? It's entering the shadow. It's going to station retrograde. It's going to go back through all these degrees of Libra. It's going to bring back what's um, relational, right? Libra is all about relationship and a lot about how we have in particular suppressed our needs. Whenever we have anything that is suppressed, any part of us that is rejected, um, whatever doesn't find its way out makes its way out. So we're talking about, you know, emotional content, shadow content, where it, it finds a way out. If, if we don't purge, we get the exit, you know, we get, it moves its way out in some way, shape or form into our lives. It's often moves its way out through our mind playing the same story you know if you're perseverating on something you're sort of ruminating on or every time you see something this is one of the markers of trauma it's like if you've had a traumatic experience uh you know with a man who was wearing a yellow coat it can be literally especially in the beginning the more close we are to the trauma every time we see the man in the yellow coat and it could be any man. It could even be a child who flashes a doll that has a, a yellow coat on. All of a sudden, we're triggered. That memory comes back. And we're working with Uranus retrograde, which also, you know, the, the capacity for nonlinear memories to be returning into our bodies, into our field, into our mind. Um, we have Hygieia on the south node in Scorpio, you know, the ways in which our physical issues, our trauma, inflammation in the body, um, you know, parts of us that are stuck. It can be also related to our sexual functioning, especially with Scorpio, where wherever there's been either sexual trauma or that led to, you know, whether it's um, disorders, eating disorders, emotional disorders, um, where we've had sexual betrayals. And so we've, we've got healing that's really being called forward in, in these relationships where actually we haven't gotten to experience the deeper healing of intimacy because these things have happened. I remember, you know, a big part of my journey was having some really deep trauma and then facing that at the end of my relationship I'm really doing the work in a, with a group of women to face those pieces inside myself. It was so hard. And yet what happened, what opened up inside of me was an ability to experience intimacy that I had never experienced before. 
And that came later. It came as a part of the process of forgiveness. And I'll bring a lot more of this into our container as we work on the level of shame, you know, in our first class, right? This is the, the first um, part of the muck that we have to get into in order to bring about total healing and forgiveness. To be able to come back from shame means to be able to come back to a place in our life where we see ourselves and our being as pure, as holy, right? If we've violated our body in whatever way, if others have betrayed us in whatever way, there can be a distortion of our perception that we don't actually see ourselves as holy, as healed and whole beings. And this is a huge part of this return right now, you know, of this work to become, to come back to a place where our, our mind is a holy temple, our body is a holy temple, and that's sexual experience, connection, intimacy becomes safe, becomes holy, becomes a place where our spirit is renewed, where we feel connection to the divine. That's really how, how God intended it. It's a place where we're creating. We're actually like the womb is the home of creation. Our creative power lies within. It is the place of our most holy um, emergence where the divine wants to express itself through us if we are disconnected from that if we are suppressing that if we are ashamed of what we are or who we think we are right living in the perpetuation of any form of distortion even if it feels real and it's okay if it's at a place where it feels real right we have black moon lilith lilith and series all in leo the the desire to be seen is strong relative to we have Astraea and Juno and here the moon in Pisces with Neptune and Diana retrograde, <laughs> right? The feminine work is really strong right now. All, you know, while we have this beautiful ongoing perfection of Saturn squaring this nodal axis, right? It's not as tight, but Saturn is retrograde, which means that we're in the second pass. We're in the new opportunity. Okay, it's happening now. It's happening on the inside. It's so deep, right? All these planets that are retrograde, Chiron, Jupiter, Neptune, all the asteroid goddesses <laughs> pretty much, except for Lilith and Ceres um, and Pallas Athene being direct. Uh, we have Uranus retrograde, the calling right now to sort of excavate from a Pluto perspective, all of these aspects, right? And I'm not saying necessarily that Pluto relates to all these things, but Pluto is, is the core essence of our soul journey. And the way I, you know, transmit the chart is that the life experience is also represented mirrored by the planetary journey, by the, by what's happening as above, so below. And, I, and on my website, I have my expansion of that as within, as we desire, so we grow, right? We're here to grow. And Pluto is the bottom line of our desires. If in the end, the only desire is to return to source, to know ourselves, to return to God, that is that is the way home, right? It's not about leaving the body. It's about purifying through our deepest desires until we get to the place where the only desire left is to go home to our true self, to know ourselves, to return to source. And I can tell you for myself, I have a lot of other desires in the way of that desire. And they have caused me an immense amount of suffering in the last year and a half, especially. Um, and a part of what my commitment is in this work is to continue to look at the ways in which um, our deepest desires, our longings, are one with that desire to return to source. 
where I'm suffering, I'm still stuck in resistance. I'm still stuck in the past. I'm still, I'm not choosing evolution and where I'm in despair or just letting go into a place of acceptance. I'm also not yet in a place of cooperating with source, with the divine, because ultimately I think that God's only desire for us is to return home, to return to source, to know ourselves as love. And even if that means we're still walking on the earth and playing out desires that we do that walk, not alone, but together that we do that walk as much with as much awareness of that this is a healing journey and that we do that walk um, really with a commitment, a dedication to, to know ourselves, to know our soul. Um, because, you know, relationships will come and go, even if we get all the, all the most powerful commitments in the world, people will pass on, people will leave us in this way. Children will have their own evolutionary journey, we will have to face all of these things within from our own soul. And it's that one place within that honestly, no one can ever really fully know. And in that way, we often feel alone. Like there's this place within that no one can know. And what I, I want to explore together is also to recognize that that is the same place within us. And thus, in a way, we all know that place. So um, you're invited to join me this Friday. Class begins. All of the transmissions in class will be recorded. Um, all of the recordings will be available um, to class participants, even if you join the class later. Um, the group sharing, listening, and personal chart practice will not be recorded unless consented by the entire group and unless consented by the individual. So those containers um, may or may not be recorded. It will be really up to the collective needs for safety um, and the honoring of the container itself. But um, I would love it if you feel called to join me on this journey, please do register sign up. Um, the link is in the description for this video. It's also on the website. Um, if you have any questions about it, you can email me directly, reach out. I will be gathering the charts of all the participants and each month we'll be dropping in to uh, a soul's work. Um, and we'll be dropping into the theme of that month, really exploring it through the lens of the Pluto journey, but also through the reflection of all the other planetary bodies. And I work with the goddesses very strongly because I feel the reemergence and the return of the feminine in a healed way comes from us remembering things that have been deeply suppressed and from us returning and reevaluating the stories, the mythologies of the past in a new way. So that's a big piece that I bring in to this container. I don't think that the original astrological transmissions, which were mostly done by men in an environment where women were killed essentially for being astrologers or could not be astrologers publicly, um, that we have these stories that personify the feminine in a particular way, there is a deep need for us to actually um, unpack and unravel some of those stories. And that's part of what I, the work that I do with the feminine asteroid goddesses, is I really want to come to a place where we're remembering who we are um, before, you know, it's like the story of Lilith, um, the original Eve, in the Garden of Eden, in the place of perfect sanctuary and oneness with God, and how we've personified the wild feminine who wouldn't subject herself to the masculine in a way that has distorted feminine wildness, that has distorted our perceptions of, um, of what it is to be completely free and untamed. And thus we, we live with internalized judgment, shame, fear, um, 
you know, and these are pieces for us to see and to look at and to reclaim, right? Where Juno is a representation of commitment and marriage and her relationship to Jupiter was one of deep betrayal. Um, he was the, a philanderer. He was, you know, all these things. And, and so her, her relationship to jealousy, right? Her relationship to the masculine, not being held accountable for infidelity, but, um, you know, this sort of double-edged sword. I'm watching this um, show series on Netflix called Another Self. It's in Turkish. And it's one part of the dynamics is this woman who was cheated on by her husband and then they're getting divorced. And then um, she cheats on him with someone else, but it's not cheating because they're separated, but he's offended and like, there's this whole scene that was just playing out in the last episode that I was watching. And it's like brings up all these shadow dynamics of the past, of archetypal journeys between married couples, of lovers, of the places where we feel so deeply betrayed, the places where we decide from a healing perspective, I'm going to be hurt again. And so we close our hearts to love and we don't open ourselves to actually that which is true, that which we know inside. And so there's a whole healing journey in relationship that plays out through the soul. And this show is phenomenal if you haven't um, heard of it or watched it. Because it suggests that the past, you know, the journey of the soul continues to play itself out until we see and heal these archetypal uh, masculine feminine dynamics and also the family dynamics. The show actually addresses family, generational family trauma that goes unspoken. It's really the first time I've ever seen someone describe actually the work that I do or the things that I see in charts in, um, in a forum of playing out psychodrama. It's in a, in a healing container. This, um, the guy in the show, the healer is um, really helping people to see and experience unhealed generational trauma. It's phenomenal. So anyways, I highly recommend the show. I'll end my tangent there with saying like, this is really why I feel so deeply drawn to this work. The knowing that whatever is coming up in our lives is an opportunity for healing, is an opportunity for our souls to grow. And really for us to end the cycle of perpetuating these patterns in our lived experience and in our generational experience where our children are impacted, where our families, you know, where family trauma stops with the mother-daughter generation, right? We don't carry it forward. We don't continue to... Um, do this in isolation. We start to bring out and bring up and love that which is within so that we can fully know ourselves. So that feels like a good place to stop. Thank you um, so much for those who are with me on this live call. Um, feel free to stay and join me for a little bit of Q&A and discussion. I'm gonna end the recording here. Um, for those who are watching the replay, feel free to go to the website and register or contact me for more information. And um, anyways, no matter what, whether you feel called to join me or not, I send you so much love and blessings on this journey. And um, I will, be speaking about this, I'm sure, in my week ahead video. So please feel free to just stay tuned on the YouTube tube channel and um, listen on a weekly basis with me. Lots of love.